Hey guys, Tom here today again for Shifter, a channel all about urban cycling and bike commuting. And today we're going to be talking about a topic that you could probably write a PhD thesis about, bike handlebars. But don't worry, this is not the PhD thesis level bike handlebar video. Today the attempt is to answer a big broad question is, which style of handlebar is best for my urban bike life and my bike commute? So I won't be getting into uh, details about brands or specific models or widths or lengths or any of that sort of bike nerd stuff today. It's really be asking the fundamental question, which style of handlebar is best for me? And today we'll be looking at five different types of handlebars flat bars, riser bars, bullhorn bars, drop bars, and cruiser bars. Cruiser bars? Cruiser handlebars, I should be specific. Otherwise, it sounds weird. And rather than just me pontificating about different handlebars, I'm trying to make this a bit more objective. I wouldn't go as far as to say scientific, but slightly more objective. Come up with a rating system that we'll call the shifter urban cycling bike commuting handlebar decision-making matrix. And in this matrix, we will look at uh, a number of different elements, including comfort, speed, control, practicality, and then a bit about the intangibles of each kind. We'll go through all of them, and if you watch till the end, we'll pick a winner, which will be the best handlebar for your urban bike life. All right, let's get started. Okay, we'll start with what is probably the most common type of handlebar, and that's the riser, called because it's not exactly flat, it's got a bit of a rise in here. Uh, they're popular because they're easy to use, they're simple, they're kind of a mix of a bunch of different elements, and they're affordable. Probably ridden a bike with riser bars yourself. Okay, for comfort, I'm giving the risers a seven. And that's because the rise gives you a bit more of an upright position, which is less stress on your lower back if you've got back problems. Um, so that's all good, but also it only gives you one hand position. And I actually don't find this position all that comfortable. I find like it twists your wrists a bit, and on long rides, I do feel it. So that's something you should be aware of. Uh, speed, I'm giving a five, because the risers are a bit more upright, which means you don't really get tucked down into that aerodynamic position, which means it's not the speediest body position, therefore not the fastest style of handlebar. Next is control, and I'll give control an eight because bars like this, I find, give you a lot of control. Um, a lot of it depends on the width. You'll see on newer mountain bikes, the width of the bar bars can be really wide, and that's to give you extra control on those trails and that sort of thing too. You can cut the bars down however you like them. So it sort of depends on your width, but this position does give you like a lot of control over the bike. Um, there's no weird positions. Your hands are far enough apart that it gives you a nice position over the bike, which gives you a lot of control over that front wheel. So yeah, I feel a ton of confidence riding riser bars, so they score well in control. And in practicality, I'm giving it an eight. They're simple, they're easy to use, you just get on and go. There's lots of space to put all your urban junk, like you know your lights and your bell and your phone case and all that kind of thing too. Easy to use, super practical, give them, I'm giving them an eight. As for the intangibles, four. Meh, they're just kind of meh. Riser bars are kind of boring. Okay, next up are flats, and flats are very similar to risers, but they are flat. I actually don't have a bike with flat bars at this time, but I do have flat bars. So here they are. As you can see, they're very similar. They just lack the rise. They're just flat, imagine that. And most people I don't even think would even notice a difference between a, a, a slight rise and a bar and a flat bar. But as with everything in cycling, some people like to make a huge difference out of tiny little nuances. So here we go. We're gonna look at flat bars as well. Uh, comfort, I'm gonna give these a six, slightly lower than the risers. And because they're a bit lower, you do have to get crouched down a bit more, which puts more pressure on your back and puts more on your wrists, so they're slightly less comfortable, I would say, than riser bars. Plus, you only have one, again, you only have one hand position, you can't adjust much, so you're stuck in that position the whole time, which can get uncomfortable on a long ride, if you've got one of those long commutes, I guess. However, because you are a bit lower, you do get a bit more aerodynamic and a bit more aggressive in your riding position, so they're a bit faster. For speed, I'll give them a six, uh, because you are a bit lower, you get a bit more crouched into that aerodynamic position, which means you get a bit lower and you get a bit faster. I mean, you could use a riser bar and maybe just pedal slightly faster, but, you know, the half-inch difference in a riser bar and a flat bar really makes that much difference in your commute time. I congratulate you on solving all the big problems in your life. Really, it doesn't make much of a difference, though. 
Control, I'm gonna give them a nine because uh, flat bars, you get a bit more down, you're really on top of them. You really have great control over that bike. A lot of it also, again, like I said before, depends on the width. Um, if they're, the wider they are, the more control you're going to have, but also be aware if you're urban riding, maneuver between cars and through tight spaces, you wanna be aware of how wide they are. So talk to your local bike shop about that. And for the intangibles, I'm also giving these a five because it is very difficult to get excited about flat handlebars. There you go, I said it. So as I was shooting this video, I was looking at the clouds over there thinking, whoa, that's crazy. There are some crazy clouds in the sky right now. And then I got a tornado warning on my phone, a tornado alert, so I'm heading home. We'll pick this up tomorrow. Well, there was no tornado, which is great. Uh, and we're back this morning. Let's do the important stuff, handlebars. Okay, next up is bullhorn handlebars, which are these ones, named so because they look like the horns of a bull. Uh, these originally started as uh, handlebars for track racers, but like lots of things for, about racing, they've made their way to the streets. And these days you see them on a lot of uh, fixed gear bikes or single speed bikes like this one. All right, let's get to the ratings. So as far as comfort goes, I'm giving bullhorns a six out of 10. On the plus side, there's multiple hand positions. You can have them down here on the corners or up on the bars themselves, uh, which is nice because it gives you lots of options for your wrists. And on the downside is that all three of those positions are pretty aggressive. So you get down low and uh, you've got to crouch a lot, which is, which is not great for comfort, therefore the six. For speed, I'm giving them an eight because it does get you down into that aerodynamic position. So they're a little bit faster, especially when you get down here. One other great thing about the speed is that when you're going uphill, these uh, have a great position. Uh, so if ascending your commute hill in record time is important to you, then these are definitely the handlebars for you. Uh, for control, I'm giving them a five out of 10. Um, your hands tend to be a bit closer together. They're not as wide as flats or risers, uh, which means a little less control. They take a little bit of time to get used to riding them. Um, and oftentimes, you, well, I'd say every time, and most times you don't have brakes in all these hand positions. You either have brakes here or up here, but usually not in both, which uh, does give you a bit less control, I would say. For practicality, I'm giving them a seven out of 10. They're pretty clean and simple and easy to use. That's all good. Um, but because they have bar tape, there's not a lot of room for your gadgets on here. It's hard to put lights or a bell or your phone on bars like this. So they're pretty good, but not perfect. And as far as the intangibles go, bullhorns for me get a 10 for two reasons. One, they're called bullhorns. That's badass. Number two, they look badass. Drop bars. Drop bars are basically built for speed. They're racing bars. You've probably seen them uh, in the Tour de France because they are the fastest of all bars. Okay, the ratings for drop handlebars. I'm giving them for comfort a seven. Uh, this is a bit of a tricky one to rate because drop bars have multiple hand positions. We've got one here, two here, three here. Sometimes I'm even finding myself here. So that's four. Multiple hand positions is great because you can adjust as you go, take whatever feels good. But at the same time, they're also all very aggressive. They're all crouched pretty low, um, which can be difficult uh, from a comfort perspective. Therefore, I'm giving them a seven. Speed gets a 10 with drop bars. Uh, they are easily the fastest bars. They are built for speed. They're built for racing. So that's what they're for. They get you down, tucked into that aerodynamic position. Can have the upright one, but when you really want to get down to it, they are the fastest handlebars. Unless of course you're talking about aero bars. You've probably seen those ones. Uh, triathletes use them when you get down like this. But if you're using aero bars on your commute, you're probably insane or you are commuting 75 miles every day, in which case you don't need this video. For control, I'm giving them a six. Um, with multiple hand positions, you can usually find one that gives you lots of control. But when you're up here, uh, your hands are pretty close together, which is not as much control as a wider handlebar. Even here, they're a bit narrower. When you're down here, it's a bit tricky to control. Um, and it's a bit trickier to reach the brakes. And as far as control goes, there's so many different styles of drop bars, you can probably find one that will make you feel good. Practicality, I'm giving them a six. It's not always the most practical to get down into a tucked position when you're commuting. Um, it's not the most feasible. Uh, drop bars are hard to find space to put your uh, lights and your bells. I do have a bell on this one. I managed to squeeze it in there, but it's not the easiest. 
Um, and I would just say they're just not the simplest, most practical bars to use. I find these bars always get stuck in my pockets when I walk by. Eh, is that a problem? Not really. And the intangibles, I'm giving them a seven. I like drop bars. Um, if you're in the mood for speed, they are a lot of fun. And when I'm riding them, I always feel like I'm racing. It makes me think of the book, The Racer by Tim Grabby, which you should go read right now. Cruiser bars. Okay, cruiser bar. Cruiser bars go by many different names, but you know them because the handlebars sweep backwards towards your body. You've probably seen these in The Wizard of Oz, ridden by the Wicked Witch of the West, or maybe by some you know fabulously dressed Dutch woman on the way to work. Sometimes they sweep back a little bit like these bars, or sometimes they sweep way back towards your body. Either way, that little turn can make a big difference. For comfort, I give these bars a 10. They are built for comfort. By bringing your hands back towards your body, you tend to sit more upright uh, and your head is up higher, which means you have no pressure on your back. Your whole position sits back a little bit, which is way more comfortable, more like sitting in a chair than leaning forward um, in an aggressive riding position. It does take the pressure off your wrists and put it on your butt, which is usually but not always a good thing. Either way, these are by far the most comfortable type of handlebar. Speed, I give them a three out of 10. Uh, when you're sitting upright, you're not in that aerodynamic racing position. Therefore, they're pretty slow. Did I mention that they're comfortable? Control, I give them a six. This one is a bit tricky with these bars. Um, they tend to be quite wide, which gives you a lot of control, but they're kind of tricky when you first start riding them. And most North Americans don't start, start out riding bikes like this, so it can take some getting used to. So, yeah, they can't have control, but it takes a little bit of time to get there. Practicality, I give them a seven. They're just easy and functional and you don't need anything special to just get on and ride. There's lots of space on them for all of your commuting gadgets. Easy to use, I just find them very practical. And the intangibles, I also give them a seven. I just love riding bikes like this. It's a totally different experience. You're laid back, it's relaxing, kind of gives you your zen moment for the day. There's a lot to like about the intangibles of cruiser bars. So there you have it. Hopefully that gives you enough information to figure out what kind of handlebars would be best for your bike commute or your urban bike life. Although I know what you're going to say because you guys always say this, which is like, make a decision. Okay, I'm going to do the math on the shifter urban cycling bike commuting handlebar decision making matrix. And there we go. So according to the matrix, the best handlebars are the bullhorns and the, and or the drop bars, it's a tie. But wait, this is a channel all about urban cycling and bike commuting. So we need to add some weightings to this because I think for urban cycling and bike commuting, the most important factors in a bike are comfort and practicality because really it's just about getting where you need to go. So what I'm going to do on this is give some weightings to those categories. I doubled the points in the categories of comfort and practicality, as you can see. And that, jit, and that did change the ratings a bit. Look at this. Cruisers came out on top, followed by drops and bullhorns. And to be honest, I'm not sure how I feel like that. I mean, would I really choose bullhorns over rises or flats if I'm a noob? I'm not sure. So how about this? How about if you're a newbie cyclist and you're just getting into bike commuting or urban cycling, I'd say go with risers or flats. They're the most popular, they're easy to find, easy to ride, um, they're kind of a middle ground, you'll be fine. If uh, looking cool and going fast is important, go with bullhorns. If you've got a really epic commute, really long, I'd say go with drops because you wanna be fast and get there quickly, you don't wanna spend all day riding. And if you're, if you're not traveling too far in your urban bike life or your commute, say within 10 or 12 kilometers, go with cruisers. They're slow, but they're comfortable and easy to get around with and you'll enjoy the ride a bit. So there you go. Bike handlebars for everybody. Hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching.